Good morning. I'm Andy Myers at Weiss Research. I'm Jen Amos, and this is your Morning Market Update for Tuesday, November 15th. U.S. stocks are following the European markets into negative territory for the second day in a row, despite some positive data on retail sales and manufacturing. Even with that encouraging news, Europe's sovereign debt crisis is once again weighing down global equities. A report yesterday showed that the European Central Bank settled fewer government bond purchases than expected last week. That's renewing fears that Eurozone leaders will not be able to contain the debt crisis in its peripheral nations, and that larger economies such as Italy and Spain will require bailouts as well. Following that report, the yield on Italy's benchmark 10-year note is surging back to 7%, the level at which Greece and Portugal were effectively shut out of the credit markets. And Spain's benchmark government bond is now yielding six and a quarter percent. A separate report on third quarter economic growth in the Eurozone is doing nothing to boost investor confidence this morning. Gross domestic product grew by just two tenths of a percent over the second quarter, and the expansion was 1.4 percent better than the same period last year. But economists point out that the growth was concentrated in just a few core countries, namely Germany and France. And there may be more bad news to come. Leading indicators show that there's already a sharp slowdown in economic activity underway in the fourth quarter. Meanwhile, things may be looking up for some segments of the U.S. economy. Retail sales climbed by half a percent in October, more than double what economists were expecting. The gains were driven by higher purchases at online stores such as Amazon, as well as electronics and appliance stores. We're also getting some good news from the manufacturing sector. The Empire State Index of Manufacturing Activity in the New York region turned positive this month, after five months in negative territory. Economists predicted that we would see a sixth straight month of contraction in November. Perhaps the most closely watched piece of economic data this morning was the report on producer prices. They fell three-tenths of a percent in October, their biggest decline since February of last year. The decline was due mainly to a drop in gasoline prices. But excluding volatile energy and food costs, the so-called core producer price index were flat, below the slight gain forecast by economists. Despite last month's declines, wholesale costs have risen nearly 6% in the past year, and core prices are up by 2.8%. Following all the data, investors are predictably favoring the U.S. currency over the euro. The euro is now trading well below $1.36. U.S. Treasuries are also drawing investors this morning pushing the yield on the benchmark 10-year Treasury note back toward 2 percent. And despite the dollar's relative strength, most commodities have turned higher as well. Crude oil is rising further above $98 a barrel, while gold is holding steady at around $1,780 an ounce. On the corporate front, traders are reacting to earnings reports from three big names in the retail industry, including the world's largest retailer. Walmart is losing nearly 2 percent after posting a 2.7 percent decline in its fiscal third quarter profit. Rising gasoline prices and persistently high unemployment cut into spending by the company's low-income customers. But Walmart did report better than expected revenue growth thanks to its international business, and it raised the low end of its full-year earnings forecast. Meanwhile, the office supply chain Staples is tumbling more than 5 percent. Its net income rose 13 percent as the company was able to control its costs. But sales fell short of estimates, and Staples also cut its full-year earnings forecast. But we are seeing some modest gains in shares of Home Depot. Its fiscal third quarter earnings rose by 12 percent as same-store sales continued to improve. That prompted Home Depot to boost its quarterly dividend for the second time this year. After the closing bell, Dell will report its quarterly results. That's the latest from Weiss Research. Have a great day today.